This is the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. And then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with His angels in the glory of His Father, and then He will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. So today's sermon is honestly be aptly called part two. Um, uh, from last week, because both the Romans text and the gospel are what happened immediately after each other in Scripture. And so, um, if you aren't aware of what we talked about last week, it's on our YouTube channel. You can go and and search it and and, and listen to last week's sermon. Uh, That pastor was on point, I tell you what. It was me. But anyway, um, uh, but we're going to talk about the second half of both of these readings today. Um, So we're in Romans 12 again, and if you want to follow along, it's on page 922, um, and it's at the very, very bottom of page 922 where we begin at verse 9. And just to kind of catch up where we're at, uh, last week we heard um, uh, Paul talk to the Romans about don't be conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind to know it is the will of God. And he talked about how the Jews were, were wanting the Gentiles to conform, the Gentiles were wanting the Jews to conform, and, and how they were trying to be a church together. And this transformation comes whenever we are seeking God in, in each other and looking for Christ in each other to be the body of Christ out in the world. And so that's where that transformation comes from. And so now Paul is going to look at them and give them concrete examples about how to do this. So at first it's kind of you know, theoretical. Now he's like, and this is what you need to do. And, and Mark, thank you for, that, for reading for us today. It was well done. Because he begins right off by saying, let love be genuine. Let your love be that of like mutual affection. I don't know about you, but there, there's definitely times in my life where I've looked at somebody and said, love you, and I don't know if I really meant it. You know, I, not, you know, I mean, we've all done that, I think. Um, uh, but here it's that sense of, I'm going to treat you in the way that I like to be loved. I'm going to give you such care and attention because that's what I want to happen for me. That's that genuine love that Paul is talking about. That's that mutual affection. He says that's showing honor. In fact, do each other, be more honorable to the other person than they're being honorable to you. Go overboard with it. He talks about showing hospitality to strangers. So it's not only giving love and attention and care, that mutual affection to the people that are closest to us, it's to everyone. Not only to Jews or Gentiles, but any stranger that decides to come up, we're called to give that same love and care and affection to them as well. And then he starts pulling a page out of Jesus' book. Bless those that persecute you. Bless. Don't curse them. Even those people that are wanting to cause you harm, we're to show them love. Maybe not in our actions, maybe not to stay in that space anymore, but in our hearts to turn them over to God, to to show them that type of love. And then he says, rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. And from last week, we we learned that that is actually being transformed when I enter into your joy or I enter into your sadness and I recognize the pain that you're going through or I sit with you in those times of excitement. I change because of that. I'm transformed because of that. And I take a little bit of you with me. This is the harmony that he's talking about with one another. This is that idea of living peaceably that he says. And then he starts talking about this thing about avenging and revenge. He says, that's not what we're here for. In fact, God says, vengeance is mine. So in other words, if you're trying to seek revenge on someone, 
then now you're dealing with the world stuff. Now you're dealing with the selfish stuff. Now you're only taking it after you. Because if we think that that person harming me is the only bad thing that's happened, I forget all the other people that I've harmed beforehand that I probably deserve countless amounts of revenge done to me. So Paul is saying, let, let God sort those things out. Your focus is to love that person. And then he quotes Proverbs. So that our Jewish siblings are going to be hearing this, and they're going to recognize this is an amazing part of Proverbs. It says, if your enemies are hungry, what do you do? Feed them. If your enemies are thirsty, what do you do? Give them something to drink, which is counterintuitive, right? That's not something we want to do to people that are our enemies. And then he says, my favorite part, for by doing so, you're heaping burning coals on their head. Well, finally, we're going to get them back, right? Finally, I get to show some pain in here. No, that's not what burning coals means. Really, what burning coals is talking about here is you're going to give them an opportunity to repent. You're going to give them an opportunity to see God at work in you and this forgiveness and this love and this care, not seeking revenge, but, but actually seeking to bless them. And by doing so, maybe, just maybe, they will turn toward God and repent. Because burning coals is like when they would put ashes on top of their heads, they would wear sackcloth, they'd lie prostrate on the ground back in the Old Testament. This was a sign of repentance. And so Paul's looking at them saying, you actually have the ability to show them God in a way that they just might turn toward God and repent, that idea of burning coals. So Paul says, if you really want to transform the mind, here's some concrete things to do. Love one another. Don't curse. Bless them. Give them something to eat. Give them something to drink. In other words, serve them. So now we turn to our gospel lesson, which is the second half of last week's gospel in Matthew 16. You may remember last week, it's the one where, where Jesus says, who do you say that I am? And Peter jumps up in the head of class and shouts out, you're the Messiah, the Son of God. And everybody starts to clap for Peter because he got it right. And they pat him on the back. They give him a gold star. They hoist him up on the shoulders. And that's the end. No, that's not. And we talked a little bit about how Peter does go through some transformation himself. But I left out this story because I knew it was coming this week, and it's quite the fall from grace. Because immediately Jesus turns to them and says, we're going to head into Jerusalem. I'm going to suffer. I'm going to die. I'm going to be raised after the third day. I'm going to experience resurrection. And Peter immediately is like grabbing Jesus, pulling him aside. He's like, dude, no. You can't say this. No, this can't happen. You're the Messiah. We just got through naming this. You're supposed to save all of us and you're going to die? And immediately Jesus looks at him and says, get behind me, Satan. You're a stumbling block to me. You're setting your mind on human things, not divine things. That's an awful lot to unpack there. So let's begin at the beginning of this lesson. Jesus says he's going to go to Jerusalem, he's going to suffer and die and be raised on the third day, and what's the one thing that Peter focuses on? The suffering. That's the earthly stuff, that's the worldly things, that's the selfish things. Do any of you really want to suffer? No, we don't want to suffer, we really don't want to die, but what if we knew that on the other side of that was resurrection, on the other side of that was life eternal, on the other side of that was glorious, on the other side of that was God it changes a little bit of our thought process, but still, I don't want to suffer. I don't really want to go through that. None of us want to go through that. Peter, in his humanness, is, is crying out to Jesus, say it ain't so. And so then Jesus says, you've got to get behind me, and he uses this profound word, Satan. All right, so let's talk about that word real quick. A lot of us, if you're like me, when you hear the word Satan, you think of that medieval image of the pitchforked devil, red with the horns, right, and little goatee. Right? Uh, so here is this, here's this devil figure that, that causes us to do bad things. The devil made me do it, right? It's not that type of Satan concept at this point in time. Satan first gets introduced to us in the book of Job. And if you've never read it, you should go check it out and find out where he comes in because he enters into the courts with God. He starts to challenge God, goading God, and wanting to uh, challenge the righteousness of God. And later on, the concept of Satan, of hell or Hades, um, the concept of Satan to the Jewish people was more of a, of, a, of a supernatural type of being that wants to whisper in your ear to make you do things that are immoral. And so now Peter is saying things that are going to cause people to question, to cause people to doubt. And Jesus looks at me and says, stop that. 
Get those thoughts away from here. Get behind me, Satan. I'm pointing toward the resurrection, and you're stuck here on earth. In fact, what you're saying is a stumbling block. It's not allowing people to grow. It's not allowing people to move forward. It's not allowing the rest of us to go on toward this resurrection. Stop that. And then he looks at all of them, and he says, if you really want to be my disciple, if you want to do what I'm doing, here's the concrete example. Deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. Well, what did Jesus do in his ministry? He fed people, enemies. He gave them something to drink. He nurtured, he clothed, he healed. He sat with people that didn't want to be, nobody else wanted to. He touched people that were unclean. He welcomed the stranger with radical hospitality. And ultimately, he goes on to the cross to suffer and to serve all of us, granting us forgiveness of sins. If you want to be my disciple, deny the self, deny this worldly stuff, and follow me. It's not the path to the cross. It's the path to resurrection. It's a path to, to life everlasting. It's a path to glorious, glorious things. Jesus is looking at his disciples and basically saying what Paul's saying. Go out and serve other people. Do what I've done. Go be of service to others. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we also have concrete examples for us to participate in this coming week. I want you to join me on Saturday morning at 9 o'clock in McAllister Park. We're going out there to pick up the park as part of God's work, our hands. It's not glamorous, but we get to go out for two hours and pick up trash in the park, everything from cigarette butts to cans to diapers to bags of dog poop that didn't make it into the trash can for some reason. We go and we pick that stuff up, and not because we want to pat ourselves on the back, but because it makes the park look better. It makes the animals have a better life. It makes those that are participating in the life of this park also uh, appreciate it so much more. And we've done this for multiple years now, and every time I go out there from 9 to 11 and pick up this park for two hours of my Saturday, I'm not thinking about all of my problems. <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> I can go and pick up trash, and I'm serving others by doing so. I want you to join me on Sunday, next Sunday, down in the gym. We're going to intentionally write letters to people that can't make it to worship, people that are in the hospital, people that are hurting right now and can't be here, and let them know that we are thinking about them, that we love them, and we want to know how we could serve them. Talk about serving others. Tell me about your problems while you're writing a letter to someone, will you? We're going to be putting together fleece blankets for Bamsi Auxiliary. We're going to be putting food together for animals for families that get Meals on Wheels, they, the Meals on Wheels does not deliver animal food, but these people have beloved pets that they care for and that they love, and we're going to provide bags of dog food or cat food for them. What a way to serve others. We're going to put those all together. We're going to be doing kits for Lutheran World Relief, for health kits and school kits, and you all get to put those together next Sunday, an opportunity to intentionally serve others. I'm pretty sure you won't be thinking about any of the worldly issues that we have around us as we are intentionally serving others. But it's not just for one day next Saturday or Sunday. Today's the day. Today is the day. If you're struggling with worldly issues, maybe you're holding vengeance against someone, or you want to get revenge against someone, or you would rather curse them than bless them, and I would encourage you to find some way today to be of service to someone else. Maybe you take a cart in from HEB that's out in the, in the parking lot to serve somebody else. Maybe there's some way that you can find to do just today to get out of ourselves, to get out of the worldly stuff, to deny ourselves, and to pick up our cross and follow Jesus. So today is a wonderful day for us to seek God and serve others. Amen.